Hi everyone. I am Dr. Shashikant. I am a consultant uh, pathologist and professor. Today we'll be discussing a very common clinical condition that is Graves' disease. So before going towards the presentation, please like the video, comment and subscribe to the channel and also stay tuned till the end. We have a M MCQ uh, to discuss at the end of the presentation. So Graves' disease is uh, regarded as the most common cause of endogenous hyperthyroidism having a very high incidence in women, generally of 20 to 40 year of age group, having a clear cut autoimmune basis that is being established. The pathogenesis uh, lies in various autoantibodies. So the most common autoantibodies that is seen is thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin. Though the, same, though the patient can have uh, TSH winding inhibitor immunoglobulin as well, it, both of them that can coexist in the same patient also. But it is the TSH thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin or TSI, which is uh, the predominant one. And uh, all the effects of uh, Graves' disease is usually conferred due to this thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin. Other uh, autoantibodies like anti-TPO, anti-thyroglobulin antibodies are also seen, which are also seen in other autoimmune disease like Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So they are not very specific for Graves' disease, but TSI is uh, regarded as a very specific antibodies for Graves' disease. So uh, in Graves' disease, there are autoreactive T cells and B cells uh, that emerge and that uh, infiltrate the thyroid gland as well as extrathyroidal uh, tissue as well. And there are uh, production of large number of cytokines are seen uh, due to uh, reaction and proliferation of this T and B cells. Genetic susceptibility with polymorphism in various genes like uh, CTLA4, CTLA PT, uh, PN22, IL2RA, all these have been also identified in Graves' disease. Graves' disease pathogenesis uh, lies in uh, infiltrative uh, ophthalmopathy is an important clin clinical entity of uh, Graves' disease. So uh, Graves' disease uh, uh, causing infiltrative ophthalmopathy is due to marked infiltration of retroorbital space by uh, active CD4 T cells. And there is inflammatory edema and swelling of extraocular muscle is being identified. So there is uh, uh, infiltration of these immune cells and that elaborate various cytokines like interleukin-1, human necrosis factor, IFN gamma, and uh, these uh, uh, cytokines lead to fibroblastic uh, proliferation and lots of fibroblastic proliferation and uh, lots of connective tissue deposition occurs in this extra ocular spaces. And also there is uh, increased number of adipocytic uh, uh, cells that have also been identified in the biopsy of this extra ocular space. Morphology of Graves' disease uh, in, uh, in thyroid has uh, been very clearly identified. Usually there is a bilateral, bilaterally symmetrical diffuse hyperplasia, as you can see over here. And there is a meaty appearance of uh, the thyroid uh, glands with a deep red parenchyma is usually seen. And here, uh, microscopically, we what we get is uh, this papillary epithelial hyperplasia. So uh, there is epithelial hyperplasia with papillary infolding with uh, being clearly identified and usually they project towards the center of the lumen and uh, they cause some uh, resorption of the colloid so there is a scalloping of colloid or resorption of colloid that is being identified you can see the scalloping the vacuolation the vacuolated colloid at the edges the scalloping is identified at many places so uh, there is papillary epithelial hyperplasia Grossly, it is uh, remarked as uh, diffuse symmetrical hyperplasia, and there is a scalloping of uh, the colloid due to colloid desorption. These are the clear cut features of Graves' disease in thyroid. So, coming to the clinical features, the signs and symptoms of thyrotoxicosis are being identified. So, all the features of signs and symptoms of thyrotoxicosis are seen. And uh, these are uh, due to uh, the TSS stimulating immunoglobulin effect. So TSS stimulating immunoglobulin that has a similar action to that of uh, 
TSH, so which engages on the thyroid uh, receptors and uh, produces more of T3 and uh, T4. So signs and symptoms of uh, thyroid toxicosis, including uh, uh, fatigue, muscle weakness, uh, palpitations, all these features of hyperthyroidism and thyroid toxicosis are identified. And specific grave, grave disease feature include diffuse hyperplasia of thyroid gland, ophthalmopathy, and some of the patients, they also manifest as dermopathy. So hyperactive gland often uh, produces an audible brute is being os uh, palpated, auscultated uh, in thyroid gland. And there is sympathetic uh, overactivity is characteristically seen with a wide staring gaze and uh, gauge and lead leg is seen. And ophthalmopathy causes uh, proptosis or exophthalmus uh, protruding eyeball that can sometimes lead to uh, corneal injury and corneal ulceration. Thyroid hypofunction may be seen in some of the patient very rarely due to uh, presence of thyroid uh, uh, inhibiting immunoglobulin. So that has an antagonistic action to that of the TSI, which we discussed. And these patients uh, are also at increased risk for other autoimmune diseases. So these other autoimmune diseases like SLE, pernicious anemia, type 1 diabetes, Addison's disease may already be uh, presented at the time of presentation of Graves' disease, or they may develop subsequently to the presentation of Graves' disease. Infiltrative dermopathy is seen in few of the patients, and it is characterized by a pre-TBL myxedema, so myxedema on the uh, shin, and it is characterized by thickening of dermis due to deposition of glycosaminoglycans, uh, connective tissue substance, and that, and also there is a lymphocytic infiltration is being found and autoimmune mechanism, just like that of extraocular muscles here also, autoimmune mechanism, lymphocytic infiltration and deposition of uh, glycosaminoglycans or GAG is being identified. The diagnostic finding includes elevated free T4 and T3 as we discussed due to the action of thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin. It uh, acts on TSH receptor to uh, form more uh, T3 and uh, T4. So there is elevated free T3, uh, T3 and T4 is being found in the, in the sera of the patient. And that leads to uh, the feedback inhibition and low TSH levels. Radio iodine scan shows a diffusely, diffusely enlarged uptake of iodine in the thyroid gland. The treatment that uh, is uh, usually being taken is the antithyroid drugs like propyl thyroduracil to decrease uh, the production of thyroid hormones, beta uh, blockers to antagonize the sympathetic activity that is seen due to increased release of T3 and T4. Radio iodine ablation uh, can also be contemplated and uh, surgery is uh, usually reserved for large goiters that cause uh, compressive symptoms. Now let's uh, uh, discuss an um, interesting MCQ to wind up this presentation. A 20 year old uh, woman with her uh, twin sister both experience increasing diplopia. Their conditions develop within three years of each other. Physical examination reveals that they have exophthalmus and weak extraocular muscle movement. The thyroid gland is diffusely enlarged but painless in each sister and there is no lymphadenopathy in either of the women which of the following serum laboratory findings is most likely to be reported in these sisters. So you can see that there is a ophthalmopathy, there is a, a exophthalmus, there is thyroid enlargement. Uh, so this clearly establishes the diagnosis of uh, Graves' disease. So in context of this, uh, we will always expect uh, increased T3 and T4 level. So uh, that will lead to decrease thyroid stimulating hormone level. So this is the answer over here. High titer thyroid peroxidase autoantibodies may not always be seen. So this is not a very specific feature. So out of all these options, decreased thyroid stimulating hormone level seems to be the most appropriate answer. Thank you all. Uh, thank you for the patient hearing and see you all in the next uh, important presentation very soon.